It's no accident that sounds like you're leveling up in a video game. 48% of 18 to 29 year olds have an online dating profile. Make them work for it. 45% of people say they're more frustrated with this form of dating than hopeful. There are so many people you can connect with. Should I swipe right? Swipe wrong. Swipe wrong. Setting the record straight on dating apps. Everyday people telling everyday stories of the swipe right world with your host, Chaos. Well, I know he had a good time. So I won't even start it out the same way. I, well, I don't know what else to do. I mean, good morning. Yeah, welcome to the Swipe Wrong Podcast. I won't do the whole, you guys know it. If you've been listening to the show enough, you know how it normally starts. I'll just give you a break. So welcome to the Swipe Wrong Podcast. I am chaos. Welcome to the number one podcast among guys who are completely and totally confused, which is all men, but you grew up, you didn't, you, the pulling hair was bad and you got in your twenties and all of a sudden pulling hair was good. And you're just like, what do, what, what do I do? What do I, I don't know what to do here. I don't spanking's bad. Then it's, I don't know. Then it's good. I don't, we're just confused. I don't know. It's like the first person that heard a parrot talk. That person is not okay at all. So anyway, how are you doing today? Hopefully you're doing fantastic. I know I'm doing amazing. Uh, so I think this is uh, continuing the saga of checking in on on people who we had spoken with uh, when we first started the show. This is like episode 11. Um, anyway, I guess let me do the housekeeping. Let me walk it back and do the housekeeping. First of all, uh, you can catch us at swipe wrong pod at gmail.com. If you want to share your story, 317-426-6616 and, uh, like, follow, subscribe, share, send it out to friends. Uh, let them know that it's out there, that there's an outlet for them to share their stories and catch, catch everything else that's going on. Okay. There it is. There's the housekeeping done. Uh, and, uh, moving on forward. So, uh, this girl is so cool. Like I, I had a conversation with, uh, uh, I don't even know, like I'm calling Mike cause that's his name, but he's been on about four or five different episodes. He's my go-to when I need another guy on, on the show. It's him. Uh, you've heard him quite a few times. Uh, um, ass is not on the menu was one of them. Uh, he's been a part of a threesome episode. Uh, I think actually two threesome episodes. Uh, and the um, the uh, live stream that we did, but he's not the one that's a part of this. But he got this young lady on to come onto the show, and we become great friends. And she, like I, him and I were talking how how cool it is to to just ties a bind. You know, I wouldn't know this person without the show, and she's become a really good friend. So it's cool. Anyway, whatever. Not that you all want to hear, but it's cool. It's like a community that we've all become part of. Uh, some people who have been on the show is like, hey, that story's familiar to mine. Can I reach out and talk to them? And and I'll go like, well, let me find out. And then text exchanges happen, and and uh, all of a sudden friendships are born. So uh, it's it's pretty cool because that's what this is. This is a way to support each other. Anyway, she's been on the show, but I would say I think three times now, uh, three, um, and then this will be her fourth. Uh, and uh, she's she's great. So she was the first polygamist uh, episode, and. Uh, so same as everything else, just wanted to catch up, see what she's doing, uh, see if she's in a relationship, see how dating went, see how everything's been going. So um, this is uh, one that was pretty well requested, uh, and uh, we'll see what we can do to uh, to get it, get you all caught up. Welcome to, I guess I should say, the, the catching up with the polygamist part one. Disclaimer, the views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the speaker and do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions or any entities they represent. This podcast is about dating experiences. It is not to say one dating app is better or worse than another. I think this is like the fifth time you've been on, but I mean, like we've recorded, I think three or four times, but I know yeah, there's I like eight, the first time we talked though, I think we turned it into like three different episodes. I was just going to say, I think, yeah, there were some snippets that got like yeah. into other little episodes. It was uh, probably about a month ago. I don't know why I was scrolling through some of the shows. I'm like, Hmm, they're all the same. I forget what that one was. 
And then, uh, <laughs> and then I played. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's when you said all guys' dicks are pretty much the same. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, oh. That shit made me laugh when I went back and listened to him because like there's so many guys that have the ego that's just out there where I'm this and I'm that and like I know this one girl you're all the same and I believe her more than I do you. <laughs> well, and it's funny somebody the other day we were talking about like what makes your sex like if you're in a relationship or whatever with somebody what makes your sex life good. You know, and, and this guy was like immediately like, oh, it's because he has a, a huge, does he have a huge cock? Like, is that what it is? And I was like, why do you always think that? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like such a small part of the whole picture, you know? <laughs> Again, I go back to the extremes. Like if you have a super huge dick or a really small dick, there's probably going to be some issues. But the majority <laughs> of you are in the middle and that's only part of it. So it's not, does he have a great personality or does right, he make you like, laugh? Care of you in bed? Is he yeah. open to doing fun things? Like, yep. you know, can you even just have a conversation about what you like or don't like, or give feedback about that feels great. And don't ever do that again. Like, so like, how does that work? So like real quick, like, I know we'll get into other stuff here, but like, if you're sitting there and you've had sex, but you like the guy and you're like, I need to figure out how to give this dude feedback. Is that like, yeah. you talk about stress in your life. <laughs> <laughs> is that hard to approach oh yeah yeah i think so. well i mean yes and no i think that it can be more challenging with certain people right but to right. me that's kind of a red flag or maybe a yellow flag like that you can't have the conversation right if i don't okay. feel like we, i mean obviously you can't have you're nobody's gonna have that conversation like a, at least a very frank conversation right you know early on right like early on your feedback methods are going to be much more subtle right right like, trying to like just move your hand over here yeah like, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, don't me, spank me so me hard yeah i get it now you yeah. know like, yeah quit tapping my ass spank my ass i get it i understand i see where you're going yeah. here yeah. yeah yeah totally but like at the same time like i'm sure i'm sure like the first couple times you're like all right let's just see if this is how it's really done or if like it was just a one-time thing too right right but yeah. it, well, and I think early on, it's also kind of like figuring each other out, right? Oh, like, totally. What is the, do they like this? Do they like that? You know, there's a lot of that yeah. going on, but like eventually when you're in a relationship with somebody, you have to be able to have an open conversation to yeah. say, you know, I'm into this. I don't like that. I want to try this, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and I think absolutely. that's hard. And I think, um, I think that's why a lot of relationships struggle because people don't have those conversations. Yeah. And that's too bad too, because it can open up so much more fun yeah. possibly too. If you're like, all right, well, let's give that a shot. I mean, all right. Pegging is off the books, <laughs> but you know, that's, that's, that's a different conversation too. I don't think anybody yeah. wants that. Yeah. And I, I don't know, at least like, you know, when you, when I came back into the dating world, I, the number of, people who talked about a failure in their relationships because of sex, at least the men that say that. Right. Right. You know, it was really astounding to me. I was like, is it really that bad? But I, you, and then I'm like, well, at a minimum, the communication is that bad. Okay. I'll Whether or that. not like that was actually officially the problem, the communication around it was the problem. <laughs> and I could also see, people saying that like a guy especially if sex wasn't good and it failed my relationship and then just hoping somebody say well let's see if we can't figure that out you know like let's let 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 me jump in you know naked and we'll see if we can't show you what good sex is like yeah could also be like a subliminal ploy for that too oh yeah i think yeah. there's definitely some of that going on yeah for sure yeah for sure. i mean because I mean, I might say the pasta wasn't really good and that fucking ruined it. And like, all right, I want some good pasta. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so how has like, I mean, it's been a year or like uh, six months since we talked about your dating life. So what's happening? So I've been in a relationship. What? That's I impossible. Know, right? How does that even happen? I don't know. It's totally weird. <laughs> was that an in the wild or on the app meet? No, that wasn't on the app. Yeah. But you know, it was funny because it was right after the whole um oh my gosh, what's our what's our name for polygamist? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. The polygamist, polygamist. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Our buddy. 
it was, you know, right after the polygamist and I was kind of in this mindset of like, okay, I'm like going through a situation, right? And I'm, I'm probably not in the greatest like mind space to like be in a relationship with somebody or date right. somebody seriously. Cause I was still processing that whole scenario. Right. Um, but I was also in this, which I had never done before, but I was also, I think because of what was just going on, like a lot of my girlfriends were super busy at the time. And I happened to have a few free weekends without the kids and all of this had happened. And I was like, I need to be busy. Like I need to be out around people, distracted, you know, right. whatever. Right. While I'm kind of trying to process this. And sometimes when I go through something I that I'm I would say usually actually more like I did not date for I think like nine months after my divorce. Like I was not one of those people that like jumped into the dating world, got on the apps, you know, did the whole thing. I took a lot of time before I got back out there, so to speak. Right. Um, and when I've gone through other situations, that's kind of how I've been. But this time I was like the opposite. And I was like, nope, I'm just most of dating is casual. Yeah. So I'm just going to like entertain myself right now. So I'm going right. to go out on some dates. I'm just going to, it's not going to be serious I'm, because I'm not going to find anything serious anyways. Cause when does that ever happen? Right. And I'm just going to have a good time, you know? So I got back on the apps. I went out on a few dates. Um, that's how I met him. Yeah. And, um, but it was like from the get-go, I was like, this is a good human. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah I sure. could tell this is a good human, you know. Yeah, he's I mean? good to his core. Yeah. He's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> it's good. Good to his core. <laughs> so yeah, but I was I I kind of struggled because I was like, well, you know, we hit it off, we're having fun, he's a good person, he's doing all the right things. Like, mm -hmm. um, but of course I was a little gun shy given sure. that. I thought the polygamist was a good person <laughs> to his core, good to his core. All right. <laughs> so I was like, you know, not trusting myself either. Sure. Um, but I did. Yeah. I mean, we just kind of, I just kind of found myself all of a sudden with a, with a good person that was like, he was the one kind of, I don't want to say pushing me, but he was like, when are you going to get off the apps? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so it was it was like, all right, I found this dude that's cool, but I'm going to keep kind of kind of kind of dating, kind of not dating, kind of whatever, because I don't know. Like you said, you don't trust yourself. So you're like, I don't know what I want to do. I don't I have this new toy. I don't know if I want to play with it yet. Is that <laughs> kind of let me go see what other toys are going on. Let me make sure I really like this toy. And if it's like, I don't want to build a bay. I don't want to do that. So like, Yeah. Oh. Well, and also I was a little bit like I I wanted to. I didn't want it to be like a rebound situation. Mm, you know, I didn't sure. want to be like inadvertently leading him down a road. And then, you know, me realizing that I was just, you know, in this rebound place. Right. Because like I said, I didn't really go back on the apps at that point with any intention of looking for something serious. Okay. Um, which is not my usual MO, but at the time right. I was, I was like, you know what? I just, want something to do and be distracted with for a little bit while I process this whole situation. For sure. And that's for what sure. like 90% of the guys on apps are looking for. I was like, this will be fine. You know, <laughs> but then, of course I meet the one guy who's like on an app that isn't looking for something uh, casual. No, he's like, I am going to put this girl on lockdown however possible. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how long you guys been in a relationship together? So I met him. Actually, this is kind of a funny story because the night of our first date was the night that we recorded the Better Off Babes episode for oh, okay. the first okay. podcast. Sure, sure, sure. So I recorded that podcast at like wow. whatever, three, four o'clock in the afternoon, whatever it was. And then I had to like sort of leave all that. <laughs> yeah, right. Go on a date. <laughs> Man, that's a lot to unpack. Yeah. So that was kind of like, that was a little bit, you know, chaotic. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I met him in, I think I met him in like a, in early November, like went on our first date in early November. And then I think I finally like went off the apps 
at the end of January. Oh shit. And you're like, well, tis the season. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me see what mistletoe's out there. Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. that's cool. I mean, like, that's actually with all the shit that you went through, because we, you know, if you did the thirsty and then went out with them. So we talked after that while you guys had already kind of gone I think out. We just, and I guess yeah, we're still, we were still kind of talking and yeah. Yeah, while you're still sorting it out. So yeah. I don't know. That's cool. So now you've been in this relationship for, damn, you're talking almost 10 months. Look yeah. at that big old smile. Holy cow. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it sounds crazy. <laughs> so all the bullshit you went through, like, I think this is a part that gets missed. Like now that you're here, it has to, it's all worth it, right? <laughs> to go through all the bullshit? All the bullshit, right? Is it all worth it? I guess let me rephrase. Is it all worth it? I mean. Well, you know, I think you know, like the girls and I talk about this all the time. You, you take something away from every relationship. You learn something, yeah. right? It was funny. Like just the other day, I don't remember what came up, but I was thinking about the whole situation with the polygamist. And I was like, God, I looking at it now. There were so many signs, sure. you know, that I just did not probably want to see at the time, but sure. that, in, you know, put me in that situation. Now I would never repeat those mistakes again. Sure. You know, it's a unique thing though, too, though, like you can always see it happening to somebody else and we don't always see it when it's happening to us. Like you just, I don't know. It's, it's human nature. It's not, you know, they don't know this person the way you know the person or whatever. There's just not objective. So I think in that aspect, like hopefully you give yourself a break on that. Now you wouldn't let it happen again because you're like, I know what this means. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, Yeah. I mean, I think there's, you know, and, and one of the girls, she will Heather with the podcast, you know, she talks a lot about how she'll say, I've learned more in the last three years of my, you know, since my divorce or going through my divorce than I learned in like the, you know, 35 years before that or whatever. Sure. And sure. I think there's truth to that. I think going through a divorce, going through, she made a joke the other day, like, how did she say it? Something about like everybody. And she's like, I don't really mean it, but like, you should get divorced. You should get married and get divorced so that then the next marriage, like is really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you learn so much going. Yeah. Through it. Yeah. It's but, like, if anybody ever, I feel bad for the dude that ever tells Maggie, Hey, I'm just going to have a digital detox this weekend. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> dude, you're going to get your throat cut now. Yeah, you'll That's be what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And just, I guess you as well. I mean, you know, you can be like, oh, I know what this means. I know. Yeah. All right. Take care, bro. Take care. Yeah, Peace. See you around. <laughs> uh, well, I'm just happy to hear that you're happy because, like, it, the fucking journey can suck. But yeah. I mean, well, so, so again, all worth it. Dating worth it? Like, well, well dating, the all the shit you went through to get to where you're at. Well, I mean, I think the problem with that statement is like, who's to say that in five months, this relationship won't be over. All right, fair. That's you know what I mean? So it's like, stop it with your logic. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, am I happy? Am I having a great time? Like, you know, all of those things right now. Absolutely. But we also all know that even when you're in a great relationship, it can be a ton of work. It can Mm. be really hard, you Mm. know? And I feel like I'm also kind of at that stage where like, and we all just know this, I'm not saying there's anything wrong, but like you get to that, I'll say six to 12 month range. That's when sort of the, um, the, the sparkle has, is starting to wear off a little bit. Right. In any person, like you're starting to get to know them. You're starting to see, you know, other sides of them that you haven't seen or they haven't shown you or whatever. And not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but I think there's caution in that, right? It's like, okay, well, let's see if this is really, is this, you know, are we both really happy and making each other happy? That starts to come around about now. Yep. Like. So funny you say that. I talked to uh, a guy yesterday who was on that um, uh, summit thing that I did. He was one of the coaches on the summit. And yesterday he was talking about, like there's like five phases. The first three months is the perfect phase where everybody's happy, sex is great, you know, yeah. nobody's tripping. Fine. And yeah, exactly. And then after that is the imperfect phase for like the next three months where he gave an example, like uh this one girl freak was called him and was freaking out. It's like my boyfriend, he he belched the alphabet. <laughs> and he's like, I'm just sitting, we both started laughing, like, 
He's like, now he's showing you who he is. He's, you know, right, he's, yeah. he's letting, letting his guard down. Yeah. And then it comes all the way up to, you know, there's like more phases after that. And, you know, how, you know, each one. Oh, I want to hear more about his phases. Oh, yeah. Well, they'll, it'll be on the on the show. Okay, okay. Uh, I know because sure, I but... agree with him. And I, I think we probably all have had like similar conversations. Like. Yeah, totally. I mean, it ends up sure. like the last phase ends up being. um like for a guy, especially it's like, do I make her happy? Like, am I the one that's going to make her happy? And, uh, you know, why so do you guys all... feel like that's their responsibility? Well, because I think it's, I think it's a part of, um, he's got some interesting takes. I don't agree with them all, but he's got some interesting takes. Like he, okay. he thinks relationships also are, um, like men are hunters, women are gatherers, and it all mm-hmm. comes back to that form of science. So he thinks relationships, like in a relationship, it's not always 50 50. I can't say I agree with it, but his, per- his perspective yeah. is interesting. So I think yeah. um, that part, that hunting part, is the make her happy part in his perspective. Um, okay. Like, yeah. So he's got some, like, in, and it's, it's funny, like, he wants to be as volatile as possible, uh, but it's also because he says it's it's science that he's got it backed by and history and all that so but yeah like it, to me like i think relationships are 100 and 100 not 50 50 like you got to give 100 to each part because if you don't like i understand other stuff comes in but you got to give as much as you can and i would much rather have somebody who's um found has a foundation of their own happiness and we make each other you know happy along the way just you know, not necessarily an accessory or a need but Mm-hmm. a want and a desire that turns into you know the companionship but right. you know i'm also single so who the fuck knows <laughs> so yeah gotta go through that first divorce right right yeah there you go <laughs> you know they're going through that and then seeing what the hell's next but yeah i have him and then i have a couple others coming on uh no i'll have all their their perspectives which you know i don't know i'm just happy you're happy how's that <laughs> appreciate that no problem uh, that's that's it girl that's it i just want to check in with you and make sure that the dating world didn't beat you that you beat the dating world well i mean i don't know i think i think that you know it's funny i used to think that like i think a lot of people that are divorced like we've had this conversation especially when you have kids you know it's like oh will i ever get married again or oh will mm-hmm. i ever live with somebody again and it's interesting to me because of my divorce friends, I I'm the furthest out now. Like I've been divorced. Oh, if you're divorced. Okay. Mm. Um, and it, there are things, you know, it does change over time. And like, I, you know, I used to think, oh yeah, I'd, I'd live with somebody again. I'd move in with somebody again, you know, if, it, yeah. if the situation was right. And now I'm like, eh. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've lived by myself for so long that yeah. I'm like, Oh, I could like I don't know if I want to give up my drawer space and like, yeah yeah it's so weird how that works out too like I I was asked something similar like would I get married again and I was like yeah I would would I give up my own living space again like I would probably move in with somebody but yeah. I would rent the house that I own like I would rent <laughs> like I wouldn't sell it I would rent it so that way if something happened like I know yeah. I've got a place to go back to or something because everything ends like nothing's forever you know it's- well I mean and there'd be people that would argue with you on that to say like but that means you're going into the whole situation with one foot out the door or I'm protecting myself right like everybody's got a fucking savings account so right. like or not everybody but most people have right, a savings right. account in case in case the shit hits a fan all right yeah. well here's the savings account all right yeah. and if that's the case and it works out good i would rather put away extra money every month um and uh fall into a great retirement and all of a sudden i have this extra money as opposed mm-hmm. to planning on the retirement being the thing so right no yeah. i get it I, yeah I, I just I, that's what i mean i think it's really interesting yeah I think heather that. has a friend who um is divorced with two kids and in a relationship and i i don't know if it's happened yet but um they are either planning to or have gotten married and they're living in two separate homes and that's the plan yeah like, that's interesting that's interesting yeah, yeah I, like, I mean oh, okay <laughs> <clears throat> I don't, I don't know. I think for me, it looks like you said a lot of it is financial. Like, well, I have my two kids, Sure. you know, I'm not willing to risk losing anything financially that I've, you know, been spent the last five years building 
for them. Think of how hard that was. Like when all of a sudden you're in this duel and you got to start from like ground zero and build to where you are. Nobody Mm -hmm. wants to go through that again. No, no. Uh, Well, and it's, you know, this is always an interesting one too. And I've had this conversation with a lot of my married friends or coupled friends is how you split finances or how you do finances Mm. with your partner. Mm. It's Mm. fascinating to me the different ways that people do this. Like, really? Oh my gosh. Yes. Like I, I have one friend who they both have great jobs. They're married and, um, he, like his salary pays for, I know the mortgage and I can't like something else big, maybe it's, you know, health insurance or I don't know, whatever okay. her salary, like goes to some other big, like house, you know, life expense and all of their vacations. Oh, that's cool. That's interesting. You know, like, and that's how they've split it up. And I'm like, okay. okay. And I'm sure there's, I mean, that's kind of the generalization. I'm sure there's some more nuances like, you know, groceries or whatever, but, um, and then, yeah, I have another, you know, other friends where it's all in one pot, you know, that I'll it's never do all that again. divided. I have friends that, you know, so it's just like, it's yeah. so interesting, you know, what people, how people decide to like split their expenses. Yeah. Yeah. Like in my head, like when, when, and if I am like, it's going to be, yeah. you know, probably about eight different bank accounts or something. Yes. Like there'll be, there'll be a community for household stuff. There might be a yeah. community for vacation stuff and then everything else can stay separate. Right. Uh, that was the hardest thing was all the untangling after divorce. I yes. mean, we were merged everywhere, credit cards, yep. all that stuff, bank accounts. All, luckily it was amicable and all was good, but when yeah. it's ugly, that's some shit. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing is, even when it's amicable, it's still challenging. Yeah. It's daunting. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. and it's still like nobody comes out with, you know, sort of exactly what they put in. No, 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 no. There's always somebody that takes on more. Always. Yes. And it's usually whoever, you know, if it's amicable, then it's probably the person that's making more and, and all that yeah. just want to split and just want to move on. That's what happened in my case. So, yeah, uh, but that's it. So, yeah, it's hard. I mean, it, that's the lesson you learn maybe is like uh, Heather was saying, you know, if I did, you know, what I know afterwards versus what I know before. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think it's different when you have kids and don't have kids. Sure. Oh God. Yes. Or like if you, you know, had a family business or a personal business or, you know, whatever, that's going to throw a whole different element into things. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Totally. I don't know. Well, it's- all I know is you're amazing. So I'm just glad. that. I, w- I want to know about your dating life mine yeah I, so despite I, you've gotta have had some fun stories recently I, you know i don't date much i'll be honest with you i don't date much what i run into is uh people thinking i'm gonna put them on the podcast like i stopped i stopped messing around with the apps really all that much because um people think i'm gonna put them on the show and they're like uh something's up i don't i don't think i want to and it's you know you and i've talked about this before and i think you're the one that, that said well don't don't be stupid don't don't be shitty a shitty day right and, you won't be on my and podcast I, right okay. uh, and i've used that so um nah like i i have um a couple of people that i hang out with i guess um and uh there's <laughs> casually yeah there's well yeah 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 let's get popcorn together and butter <laughs> it um <laughs> or each other yeah either one either one but um there's a lot of transparency i guess um, well and that's you know what i mean and then that's fine mm, like, but, if, if everybody's transparent and on the same page then yeah yeah then there's no just, polygamy yeah <laughs> <laughs> but like i i don't i don't know like eventually they'll be the one but I don't know. Well, I got so much going on in my head. I don't know. Do you feel like, um, like, do people know about the podcast because you tell them? Yeah. Yeah. I tell them. Yeah. I totally yeah. like, I'll tell them, or actually, I have it as a part of, uh, I think, my profiles because it's also marketing. So, yeah. <laughs> For people who don't swipe or maybe I don't swipe on. Have it on your profile. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. Like I didn't for a while. And then that might be your problem. <laughs> well, unless if that's my only problem, we're in great shape. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I also I'm also a very big personality guy. And yeah. uh word on the street is I'm kind of funny too. So um <laughs> so uh like talking to people in person is like never really an issue now people responding in person is an old different issue. So, I mean, it's, it's 
it's also a good opener. Hey, by the way, you know, check out this show. Oh, you do this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But for whatever reason, that gets better response in person than it does on the apps. I don't know. Yeah. And there's so much that's lost on the apps or so you know, much. Yeah. So much. I, I our friend Jenny from the polygamist, you know, uh-huh. she uh, we've been joking like, I don't know, maybe the last like year or so, she's met like four men in the wild. Yeah. Really? Jenny, what are you doing? Like, how what? are you doing this? I don't Make understand. It's crazy. <laughs> nice. Make I know. I'm like, I, I can't like wrap my head around it. It it really is a thing that got, people are getting so tired of the apps that they're just like, like it's... people say, well, where do I meet people? Well, you walk up to somebody and you see what mm-hmm. happens, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't care about disappointment. Shit. I mean, whatever. I mean, that's, that's yeah. all part of it. I'll make you laugh either way without pulling down my pants. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll have a story to tell. So that's all that really. Absolutely. <laughs> There's this one time at band camp. <clears throat> so. <laughs> so there weren't any fun stories from your retreat that you could share? <clears throat> oh, no, there was no, like, it was all guys hanging oh, out. Okay. Um, yeah, it was, it was nothing like there was no trying to hook up or anything like that. Okay. I mean, I think one of our guys got a hooker, but you know, that's just what he does <laughs> on every trip, you know, and especially in Tahoe where it's legal, whereas yeah. Vegas, it's not. So, yeah. but no, no one was chasing anything except for just hanging out with each other. So maybe no. 10 years ago, we did besides, you know, there's not nearly the talent we'll say in Tahoe than there is like maybe during ski season there is, but not during this time of year. So yeah. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. the same. Wasn't yeah. The same. No one got my number. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being along for the ride of Swipe the Swipe Wrong podcast. Remember, everyday people telling everyday stories of the swipe right world. Uh, the show is uh, produced by Jay Pelham. He is the host of Pelham Place. Uh, so make sure to check that out. Also, I am uh, Chaos, the host of Chaotic Commentary. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow, tell a friend about the pod. Uh, and uh, if you have uh, something that you want to share, please, please, we want to hear from everybody and get everybody's stories as much as we possibly can. Uh, email us at swipe wrong pod at gmail.com. Uh, give us a call, leave us a voicemail, let us know if it's okay to call you back. 317 426 6616. Thanks for being along for the ride. And next week, uh, the saga continues. <laughs>